Hello everyone, this is General Hand Grenade. Welcome to my war room in Prince George, British Columbia. Well today, um, as you can see, I've got my World War I map on the table. I'm not playing it today. I'm, I'm going to start setting it up though because I've got a game coming up on Sunday. My buddy Robert and I are going to do another play test of 1914 and uh, looking forward to that because I haven't played a game in a little while so um, it'd be nice to play a game again but that's not what this video is about this video is about something else I um, I got a gift today um, it was really a really cool gift I've taken a quick look at it but I didn't want to look at it too much because I thought I'd do an unboxing of it it seems like a, a really neat thing and I think that you're going to like it too. So uh, let's get to it. So my son gave me this at lunchtime today. He was looking for a book on the internet and uh, he found what he was looking for. But while he was there, he also found this. Here, let's just take a look at that. So D-Day Remembered from Invasion to the Liberation of Paris. And this is a, a, a used copy. So uh, uh, got it pretty cheap. Um, there, there's a little bit of damage to the book, but uh, not really to the pages though. Like uh, you'll see there's a bit of damage to the binding and that's it. And, uh, but other than that, everything is in really good shape. So there's also, here, let's flip this over. There's also a video in here, like a DVD. Um, anyway, um, this is a really cool. When he saw it online, he, he, uh, he doesn't share this hobby with me, but he knows how much I enjoy it. And so <laughs> he's seen that and he said, Dad has got to have that. So he, he ordered it, didn't tell me about it or anything, and uh, he gave it to me today. So that's pretty cool. Um, anyway, this is it, it, I took a quick look and it's really neat. You see all this stuff in here. It's got all kinds of documentation in there. Um, they're not the actual order like a there might be an order that was written or something but they're uh, uh, like a, a photocopy of it or something right so it's not the actual piece of paper but it looks like the actual piece of paper so uh, you'll see it. it looks really cool anyway so let's open this sucker up so you just open her up here and here let's just take a look I'll lift this up so inside like there's the the uh, the video in there you can see there's a real detailed map of uh, uh, of Normandy there, and inside here's the book. So let's just take the book out of there. And there's some some paper, wrapping paper for it. So the back of the book looks like the back of the box. Uh, same with the front of the book looks like the front of the box. And you've already seen the box, so let's just move this over. Now, like I said, you can see there's a little bit of damage to the book here. And when you open it up, like this is really the only problem is, is that this part has come off of here. But there's uh, there's bookstores in town. I'm going to take it in and see if they can fix it for me. Anyway, it uh, looks pretty neat though. So let's just take a look at this book. Um, it's really, really detailed, all the stuff that's in it. Uh, the artist is Richard Holmes. This was a 70th edition, uh, or sorry, 70th anniversary edition uh, book of, of D-Day. Anyway, um, looks really, really good. I can't wait to get into it. Like the, the detail on the maps and everything is just, is just amazing. You know, showing where every unit was and, and everything, right? Um, all the different operations the strengths of the armies and stuff there's the planning lots of cool artwork in here operation neptune there's uh the leader so it shows you all the leaders in here and the chain of command you know like the allies and the german chain of command so at the top of the germans there there's like adolf hitler right and then, then down from him then they show you who's next and who's next after that and anyway that's pretty neat so the first uh, thing they're they're showing you the german forces and defenses so like there's a there's a map of normandy there and it shows you where all the german positions were 
German defenses in the West, 1944. Anyway, deception and intelligence. Lots of really, really neat pictures in here. Look at this. <laughs> My friend Doug at Historical Board Gaming would love this. He likes to make his markers. Look at that. Look at all the different uh, army markers the, for the different units, right? Really, really neat. And there's the resistance. Of course, the French resistance. And the paratroopers. Pegasus Bridge. See, this is this is the cool part. Let me let me move the book back first here. So this is the first package. There's a bunch of these packages in there. So you uh, you just open it up. Here, let's just take it out here. See what's in here. Okay, so this is the first package. Now there's a bunch of these packages in there. So look at this, eh? Like this isn't the, the original one, but it's a, a copy of it. Typical German defense works in the West. Really, really detailed. I'm just gonna quickly look over these um, because otherwise this video will go on forever. I'm just gonna do a quick look at them and then I can't wait till I've got time to sit down and and really give this book a look over. What is this? <laughs> Can you like you, you look at it? It's got the stains on there and everything, right? Even though it's not the original page, but it's uh, like if you see this, it's it's all faded and everything. It's pretty neat. Talks about the beaches. What's this one? Appendix A, First Impressions of Operation Overlord. Oh, this was, uh, looks like it was uh, a report that go, went to, to the Prime Minister by General Montgomery. That's pretty neat. What's this? Morning of 1944. Oh, so it's a map. I see. Looks like a topographical map. Oh, it's a weather. It's the weather in uh, that day. Monday, June the 6th, 1944. These are all pencil markings on here and everything. That's pretty neat. So they did their satellite map was all uh, pencil markings. So what's this one? Top secret. Supreme Headquarters, Allied Expeditionary Force. Oh, it's uh, it's the looks like it's the notes from the meetings between the high level guys. The weather forecast, bombing, warning the French. So these were all the topics that they discussed at, at the at the meeting that day. What's this one? I'm not exactly sure what this one is. Just more of the same, really. Very, very detailed, though. Really, really neat. This is a really cool book. I'm going to have to thank my son again. Here's a, looks like a sketched map. Wow. Yeah, it's a handwritten document. Probably from the field, talking about what the conditions were. That's pretty neat. Anyway, so that, oh, we missed one. Looks like a, just a little note. July 5th, our landings in, geez, I can't even read it. Looks like a doctor wrote it. <laughs> Here, I'll show it to you. Anyway, so let's put that back in the packet. I don't want to misplace any of these. I'm going to have to go through them in more detail later. Yeah, 
Yeah, these are just, uh, you find these throughout this book in, in, in the pages like that. Uh, here, let's just move along here. Oh, look at that aerial photography. There's the British Airborne Assault. I'm sh mostly just showing you the pictures, but th there's lots of writing in here. Not not on this page, but like there's some guy there. But a lot of writing that goes along with this. These were uh, this would have been a map of where the airborne had dropped the British Sixth Airborne, and then you've got the U.S. Airborne. They were the 101st, and so you've got the zones there. So they've got the intended drop zones, which are the blue ones, and where they actually dropped, which is the red ones. That's pretty neat. The weather wasn't the best that day. <laughs> they didn't exactly hit their mark. There's Utah Beach. Yeah, each beach has its own section in here, I gather. I think I've seen this picture before, or at least one like it. That's pretty neat. That's a full two pages, that picture. Here's Utah Beach. Point de Hawk. The second Rangers. Look at that, eh? There's, it's like a picture and somebody somebody wrote on it with a pen. These are where all the positions are. That's pretty neat. Uh, you don't often see a book with, you know, where you find all of this much detail in it. That's pretty cool. Omaha Beach. There's the map of Omaha Beach. Gold Beach. Yeah, it shows you the signs of the or the markings for the units that were there. Um, not on this page. Sorry, it was the page before. Took me a while to spit it out. That'd be the British on the move. Juno Beach. That's the beach that the Canadians landed on. Up here in my country, we all know about Juno Beach. Our music awards are called the Juno Awards. <laughs> so here's another one of those things. Oh, so here, like you see, it tells you on uh, on the package what's inside. Um, the documents that are in there. So Allied briefing documents. A message sent from one guy to another. German intelligence map. A report from Bletchley Park, that would be the the, uh, the spy service, right? Top secret hand-drawn map, minute-to-minute -minute positions. Air and naval bombardment for Omaha and Utah. Situational report messages. So let's just take a quick look and see what those look like. Oh, well, that's a message book. Oh, it's an actual little message book, eh? Sending messages. Of course, they didn't have radios like you do nowadays, right? So, this is what they were using, I guess. These little message books. Cool. There's a map. Hmm, let me take a look at this. Wow. Check out this map, how detailed it is. This would be Normandy here. Like this out here would not be Normandy, I don't think. Like this in, inside here is Normandy. And then over there is England. Cool. And then there's the beaches there. 
that they landed. But of course, they, they, it wasn't just the beach that they had to storm. Once they got on the beach, they had to take Normandy, right? So that they would have a place for their army. You know, like you got to get off there and you got to assemble. So what else do we have here? Neptune. Wow. Just these, uh, well, there's three pages here. Looks like somebody snuck in there with a camera and then took notes and everything. Cool. There's that note from one guy to another. What's this one? There's the batteries. I'm not going to open that, but shows you where the German batteries are. Target numbers. Neat. Oh, there's one. I missed one. <laughs> totally handwritten note. Wow. This stuff I just find just fascinating. I don't know about you. If you, <laughs> if you don't like it, then you might as well shut this video off now because this whole book is, is like this. There's a bunch of these packages in here. I don't know if I'll go through all of them, but just to show you some of them. It, it, I just, uh, this is so cool. Um, I was talking with Doug earlier today and I was telling him I got this and showed him a picture of it and he went online and they did have some of them on Amazon and uh, I think he bought himself a copy. It's a pretty cool book. So, lots of really cool pictures. That's a really neat one. That's a double page picture as well. They've taken the beach already and they're just getting the armor on there now. Sword Beach. There's the map of Sword Beach. Look at that. It's like a satellite photo, but they didn't have satellites, so be a picture from a bomber or something, right? Yeah, picture of a village or in a map of a village. Operation Epsom. Yeah, so it's got details about every operation. Here's another package here. Let's not bother opening this one. Let's just find out what's in there. Uh, sequence of reconnaissance photographs. A uh, letter from Winston Churchill to the Chief of Combined Operations. Aerial leaflet, so that's what they dropped to down to the citizens down there. Letter from Canadian Lance Sergeant Edwin Owen Warden to his wife. Written on the boat. He died in Holland in April of 45. Huh. So he, he didn't quite last a year in, in Europe before he died. First aid instruction leaflet. Oh, they got a they've got an edition, June seventh edition of the Stars and Stripes. We got to open. It. We got to take a look at that one. Oh, it's on both sides of it too. Cool. So there is the June seventh edition of the Stars and Stripes. Pretty neat. Wow, this is so cool. If you're a nerd like me that just loves this kind of stuff, this is so neat. Anyway, let's put that back in this package there. Get a better look at it later. Let's 
see what else we got. Operation Charnwood. Look at that photograph. See, I've never seen anything like this. You know, like I've seen lots of pictures and lots of footage of World War II, but this book is just something I've never seen anything like it before. You know, like these kind of pictures, I've seen lots of them. But aerial photographs. There's a thing on the medics. I suppose if you were in the healthcare industry, that would be fascinating. <laughs> Look at that, eh? Shell dressing and uh, a morphine syringe. Battle for St. Lowe. There's Omar Bradley. That's the guy they named him Bradley Tank after, I think, wasn't it? So there's the, the map for the Battle of St. Lo. Operation Goodwood. <laughs> you said Goodwood. Operation Cobra. How about that, Cobra Axis and Allies? That'd be something up your alley. So Operation Cobra and the Breakout, 25th to 31st of July, 1944. Operation Lutich. There's a Panther tank. Here's another package of, of documents. So what do we have in here? A diary from some dude. Pages from a pocket guide to France issued to US military personnel. A sheer, series of three chafe maps showing the enemy order of battle during and after the struggle for St. Lo. Nazi Party membership book, logbook of a British typhoon pilot, a page from the official war diary of 10th Brigade, some dude, an armor division, aerial leaflet dropped by the Allies on the German troops to facilitate their safe surrender. Uh, cool. I'll have to get this book fixed. Tactical air support. That's a pretty neat picture. The pictures in here are just stunning, some of them. I don't know if you can see it very well, but this book is available online. Uh, it's not that much either. I think Doug saw a new one on Amazon for like 20 bucks American. So, I mean, this is totally worth it. Like, uh, you look at the back, uh, on the back of the book there, and this was about a hundred dollars Canadian it looks like um, I think it said seventy five dollars American and that was seven years ago the fillet pocket oh there's General Curry I think he was Canadian yep he was a mechanic in Saskatchewan cool so yeah a little biographies in here there's the fillet pocket. The liberation of Paris. <laughs> Wasn't much of a battle there. Germans just got up and left for the most part. Oh, it's got some translations in here. It's got a good index. So, like, you can look up somebody's name, find out what page it's on. That's cool. Just about done here. And there's a picture. Looks like they're getting off the beach there. You can see the damage to the book. I got, I got to fix that. Anyway, wow, what a cool book. He must be jonesing for a good Christmas present this year. 
Uh, actually, it's because he loves his dad so much. Him and I are so close. Uh, uh, we go to the lake just about every weekend, him and I together. Let's just take another look at these. I got a couple minutes extra, don't you? What is this? North coast of France. Huh, well, not much in that one. There's that Stars and Stripes. Active service. Looks like you're supposed to put money in here. I wonder if this was a pay envelope or something. I don't know. A certificate of something anyway here's the first aid for fighting men <laughs> you're getting shot up by all, all kinds of weapons and this is supposed to save you no problem I got a book <laughs> that's not funny but this is in French so this is from General Eisenhower dropping it for the French citizens. Let me just translate that for you. Or not. I have high school French. Sorry, guys. <laughs> not going to translate it. Tactical 21st Army Group. Dear Simbo, you may like the following news of the, our battle. There is no doubt that the Germans were surprised and we got on shore before they recovered. The speed, power, and violence of the assault carried all before it. Generally, the beach obstacles presented no difficulty. Where they were, where they were troublesome, it was because of the rough weather, and on some beaches it was pretty rough. Wow. It's just a, a letter from one guy to another. An officer to another probably giving his report on how the day went the Germans are fighting well Russians Poles Japanese and Turks run away and it, and if unable to do so surrender that's interesting so the Germans were fighting and everybody else was giving up. I think I seen a movie on um, Japanese that were they grabbed in Russia and like they were prisoners and they were basically forcing them to fight against their will. Uh, they were building the defenses in Normandy and while they were there they got attacked so they said okay you go in that room and shoot that gun. <laughs> These guys <laughs> looks like they didn't uh, fight very hard. What a surprise. That's interesting though to, to find a first hand account of that. As a guest, prisoners about 6,000 so far. They consist of Germans, Russians, Poles, Japanese, and two Turks. British casualties about 1,000 per assault division. American casualties not known. High proportion of officer casualties due to. Well due to something behind our front. I don't know what that word is. Good many of my COs held. Whatever that means. Put them on boot hill? Don't know. The two, the two armies have now joined hands east of Bayou. No time for more. So he, that's how he that's how he finished his letter. No time for more. I gotta go shoot somebody. General descriptions and notes on sinking and raising. Piers for use on breaches. They must float up and down with the tide. The anchor problem must be mastered. Let me have the best solution worked out. 
Don't argue the matter. The difficulties will argue for themselves. Office of the Allied Naval Commander. Piers for flat beaches. Huh. Maybe that was to get the armor on the shore or something. Anyway, I think I'm going to end this here. Uh, you get a pretty good idea of what's in this book. It's uh, pretty cool, isn't it? Um, I'm sure glad I got that. I'm probably going to put it to good use too, you know. Uh, not so much for tactic, tactics in playing a game, but uh, I do um, do a bit of uh, designing for them, game design, and finding that level of detail is certainly going to, to help out, right? Um, help you understand a little bit more what was happening from right from down on the ground level rather than, you know, from a movie or from a history book that basically tells you what day they fought on and who the leader was, <laughs> you know, what kind of tank they had. You know, it tells you, like, you got guys talking about all kinds of personal things in there and showing you meter by meter, you know, what, what it was like on the way off the beaches. So that's that's really, really neat. Anyway, um, that's all I got for you guys today. So, uh, yeah, let me just show you that book again. I'll be careful with that. Can get it all fixed up. So there it is. D-Day Remembered. By Richard Holmes. 70th anniversary edition. So that's all I got. Take care everyone. General Hand Grenade out.